Okay. Do you want to call it? To yes, order? I, I want to call the meeting of the Alvin Community College Board of Regents to order. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, Tammy uh, to do a roll call vote uh, of those present. OK, um, if you'll just say yes when I call your name, please. Uh, Regent Crumb. Yes. Regent Draghi. Regent Draghi. Here, sorry, I couldn't get my thing unmuted. <laughs> That's OK. Uh, Regent Hurtenberger. Yes. Regent Kanapi. Yes. Regent Marple. Yes. Regent Pabern. Yes. Regent Tackard. I don't know I that don't, he's here. I don't believe he's here. OK. Regent Sanchez. Yes. And Regent Stetska. Here. Dr. Albrecht. Here. Wendy Del Bello. Here. Galen Katz. Has not joined yet. OK, OK. Myself. Uh, Cindy Griffith. Here. Kelly Clint. Here. Debbie Kraft. Here. Alan Phillips. Here. Carl Steger. Here. Bob Wooten. Here. And Rick Morris. Here. Okay, thank you. I believe that concludes roll call. Did I miss anybody? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Tammy, and uh, we will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Dr. Albrecht, do you certify the posting of the notice? I do. Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. I do so certify. OK, uh, let the record show that it is 6.10 PM uh, and this me meeting is hereby called to order. We have the presence of a quorum attending by video conference. Notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. On March 16th, 2020, Governor Greg Abbott granted a request by Attorney General Ken Paxton to temporarily suspend a limited number of open meeting laws to, extent, to the extent necessary to allow telephonic or video conference meetings in response to the coronavirus uh, COVID-19. In accordance with those suspended rules, the board certifies the following. A, although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance and this meeting uh, by video conference. This meet B, this meeting is being held by video conference because the convening at one location of a quorum of the governmental body is not appropriate during the COVID-19 public health emergency. C, based on current guidance from federal, state, and county authorities concerning large gatherings and social distancing during the COVID-19 public health emergency, there is no established location for an audience to observe the meeting. However, the live meeting is accessible through a web link that was timely and appropriately provided to the public and media as part of the meeting posting and via the district's website. D, as we would at any in-person meeting, members of the public who have followed the standard instructions for registering to speak during the public comment portion will be allowed five minutes to speak. And E, uh, all other meeting procedures will adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practicable. F, a video recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public on the college's website. And with that, uh, if you would please join me uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance and then followed by the invocation by Regent Sanchez. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Pray with me, uh, if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight thanking you, first of all, for granting us uh, the health and uh, good being that you have given us. Father, we come to you asking that you be with us today as we deliberate the business of this institution. You know that our hearts are heavy, that we can't be doing business as normal, but we know that you will provide us with uh, a calm, reasonable um, decision-making uh, uh, experience tonight. We ask that you be with all of those folks that are out in the line of duty doing the best they can for all of us as we try to fight this pandemic. Be with those doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, the cleaning staff, all the folks, policemen, firemen, all the folks that have to be out on the front line, those folks that are working in those essential businesses. Protect them, Father, and, and let them give, uh, give them strength so that they can endure. We ask that you be with each of us. Let us do the best we can for those around us um, so that we can uh, be uh, the, the community partners that we need to be. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful things that ACC has done to help our community. Let us be able to continue to do that. We ask all of these things, Father, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Uh, the next item is citizen inquiries, and uh, unless somebody has signed in in the last 30 minutes, uh, we did not have anybody to request an audience before the board. And so we will move on to board uh, member comments, and I am going to just do this alphabetically tonight. Uh, so Regent Crum, do you have any uh, comments? Just want to say how much how proud we are of this uh, college staff personnel, what they're getting done for the community at this point in time. Thank you, uh, Regent Draghi. I echo what uh, Dr. Crum said. Thank you so much to the staff and faculty of of the college and keeping us going. I appreciate it. Regent Hertberger. Regent Hertenberger, I think you may be muted. Regent Hertenberger, are you still there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I was just talking away, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I, I wanna thank everyone for all they have done, uh, just like Dr. Crum and Jody has said, uh, everyone has worked so hard and we're so proud of everything they've done for the college and for the community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Regent Kanopy. Well, ditto to everything. I, I uh, completely agree with, with everything that, um, prior regents have mentioned, but and I am so very proud of of Alvin Community College and proud to to have been a part of it for the last 12 years. Thank you. All right, Regent Marble. Um, on that note, I don't know what the future looks like as far as meetings go. I just wanted to in addition to mimicking everything everyone else has said is thank both you Chairman Pyburn and you Regent Kanapi for your dedicated years of service and leading us to where we are today. Thank you. Regent Tackard, are you here yet? Okay, we'll move on. Regent Sanchez. Uh, yes, just want to echo what everyone said, and uh, I think the the things that we have donated the uh, I can't even remember all the mask and the and the equipment that we've uh, uh, donated to the various entities is an awesome thing for us to do. And I want to echo what Ka uh, Cam said. Um, I get a little teary eyed looking at you two guys because I've got you right in front of me. And uh, it does make me a tad sad knowing that uh, that this is it. But thanks very much. Thank you. Regent Stuxa. 
Well, there's been a lot of good things since. You know, this is Kay and Mike. And we're certainly going to miss y'all both. You've been a very good, important part of our group. I'd like to say that the college is, well, we're just sort of getting started because the recovery from all this, and there's a lot of, there's so much more that's going to, we're going to have to do to, to get all this put back together after this is over, that it's going to be a, a very, very hard job. I don't see that there's going to be anything easy about it, but I think with the group we have, we can get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. And uh, let, let me just say um, that uh, I would just echo uh, everything that everyone has said about uh, Dr. Albrecht and, and her staff. Uh, I think they've done just a fantastic job under difficult circumstances. And uh, uh, I, I, I really appreciate the, the effort and, and uh, being able to, to keep the college uh, in operation during this. Uh, it's been a just a mountain of work and uh, and on a, on a personal note, let me just say how much I appreciate having served with each one of you. It's been one of the great honors of, of my life to be on the board and, and to be uh, chairman these past four years. Uh, I will no doubt miss it. Uh, it will feel strange on the last Thursday of the month not to be driving up to the college. I had no idea uh, you know, when we started that this is what my last meeting uh, presiding would look like. It's a, it's a crazy world we're in right now. But I just want all of you guys that are going to be um, staying on that I have utmost confidence in each of you and your ability and your commitment to the college and with Dr. Albrecht and her staff. And, and I know that uh, you guys will not miss a beat. In fact, you've got from what I can tell, a couple of really good board members coming on. And I, I think that it will continue to be a great team. Uh, and, and you guys will, will, will take the college where it needs to go. And so I appreciate all of you. Appreciate your friendship and, and all the board members that I've served with over 18 years. It's been a, it's been a, a pleasure and a, and a great learning experience as well. So anyway, with that, I'll just say Chairman. thank you. Yes. Chairman, when you finish, I just want to say a word. OK, yes, um, I, I'm I'm finished and okay. and I think you're well. OK, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't really I don't really have a president's report this time just to just to be efficient with our meeting. But two things I just wanted to remind you that you and uh, Regent Canopy are not off the hook yet because you really do have to come to the May 12th <laughs> meeting. At least be, I don't know if they'll be virtual or in person, but you need to be seated while we swear in the new candidates and then you get, then you can leave. And our intention had been all along that we would have a reception prior to uh, the last board meeting so that we could honor both of you. I, I'm pretty sure that will not happen, but we would like to schedule that for a time in the future when the future is when they're a little less unknown um, and then you know we want to be able to honor you and give you a, a chance to speak to the group and I promise you Chairman Pyburn you will get your full five minutes to address <laughs> the audience. Okay all right <laughs> I'll, I'll probably take it up too. <laughs> <laughs> okay I appreciate that uh, thank you and we'll, we'll I'll, I will look forward to that whenever that day is. OK, uh, let me see. Let me move on here. Next item that we have uh, is to approve the minutes uh, of the last regular meeting. And let me I'm sorry, I'm out of my board book here. Give me just a minute. The meeting of the 26th of March. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, as I did last month, I will just ask uh, a, a regent to make a motion and another to second, and then we will give opportunity for discussion. So, uh, Regent Crum, would you move to approve that? Uh, that move that we approve the minutes of the March 26th regular board meeting. Move for approval of the minutes. All right, Regent Draghi, would you second that? Yes, I second. 
Okay. I'm just going to go through the roll and ask if you have any additions or corrections. Regent Crum? No. Regent Drage? No. Regent Hurtenberger? No. Regent Canopy? No. Regent Marble? No. Is Regent Tackard in here yet? No. Okay, Regent Sanchez? No. Regent Stuxa? No. Okay, and I do not have any additions or corrections. Seeing that, we will go on to vote. Uh, Regent Crum? Yes. Regent Drage? Yes. Regent Hurtenberger? Yes. Regent Canopy? Yes. <clears throat> Regent Marble? Yes. Regent Sanchez? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Pyburn also votes for approval. Tammy, the minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you. All right, the next item we have are information items. Uh, I just will call your attention to them. Uh, employee count, uh, we had one resignation. That's really just for your information. Uh, I think we'll just, we'll, unless anybody has anything to say, we will move on to the next item. And and Tammy, before I, I move on, if if Regent Ta or Kelly, if Regent Tackard or uh, joins, will you just break in and let us know? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item is uh, the uh, goal number six of the uh, strategic plan uh, to develop and implement a data-driven program evaluation model to assess the effect effectiveness of college programs. And I believe this one specifically deals with continuing education and workforce development. Dr. Albrecht, would you like to uh, speak to this? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this report we had originally planned to be discussing in a workshop format on our April 6th workshop, which we, we canceled. So I moved it to this uh, board meeting since it was to be delivered to you in April. As you look through the report, um, you could see it's pretty dense. It's over 100 pages long. The, the, the actual narrative component is, is about 35 pages with several appendices that follow. Um, as you may know, this is we have reviewed all of the credit instructional programs now, um, half of them this year, half of them in the previous year, and the board gave me the goal of reviewing the CE programs. And it's the first time we've been through this, and I think um, you know, we can look at this any way you want. Certainly, if you have questions about specific things, I will do my best to answer. And I know Cindy's on the line uh, to assist if, if I don't can't, don't have an answer. But I think the thing that we have uh, found from doing this report more than anything is that, you know, we have improvements to make. And, uh, and hopefully when we get uh, new leadership for that area, we will be able to begin on some of those Area, uh, uh, areas of improvement. But one of, one of the things that we found first and, and foremost is that, and it's what we knew and one of the things we were trying to fix is that we need to have better integration between our credit instructional program areas and continuing education. There are lots of possibilities for seamless alignment of programming so that we don't have to be as, as siloed. There are certain areas, of course, in CEWD that are going to only pertain to that part and won't have a credit counterpart. But there's some areas where we certainly could um, create our career pathways. That's been our big focus for the last several years is to create pathways for students so that if a student should start in a non-credit workforce program area, wherever possible, there would be a path for them to enter into a credit program area and continue, continue their education, um, as well as kind of do the opposite of that, where we can blend and have mir more mirrored courses where CE students and credit students are sitting in the same classroom and being held to the same standards, one earning college credit, one choosing not to. We'd like to in improve in that area as well. Um, we see by the nature of the uh, separation and siloing of uh, CE from the rest of the college, that there are a lot of different processes. Processes that do the same thing like registration or payment, enrollment, 
but they're done in very different ways. And our, our CE area tends to be much more manual. And uh, we see this now, especially that we're in this COVID environment where we've had to move everything into an online format for classes and for all of our services, um, that that was even more difficult for continuing education workforce development because some of their processes are uh, so manual. And um, Mr. Simpson was in fact trying to work on some of that um, last year to try to actually get our CE programs into colleague so that we would have the ability to access student information better. And then that just stalled and didn't happen. Given all that we were going through, um, when you when you think about the time frame that this report was created, you all will remember that we had some some fairly trying things uh, going on at the college. So but we're we're confident that that can that, that can move forward. And I think one other thing that uh, made this report different than the other reports is that it's really a big, broad, comprehensive overview of the division of continuing education and workforce development. And I think the next time out, we need to have individual programs have a, a deeper look at them. We, you would see in the in the document that their individual programs have their revenues and their expenses and so forth listed, but we really don't address, uh, or this report doesn't really re address the overall quality of each of those programs, and it doesn't specifically talk about er as deeply as we'd like it to areas for improvement for each program. So we would like to see that happen. One of the good things that happened out of the other goal that you gave me this that we looked at earlier this year was um, marketing and integrating the marketing of CE with the rest of the college. And I know that we've had some issues with marketing in the past where a lot of, with, C, with regard to CE, almost all of the money was put into marketing socially through Google AdWords and the like. And so now that we have Laurent actively involved in it, uh, he has developed a a plan for next year that doesn't just allocate money, you know, five thousand dollars to this program, ten thousand for this, five hundred over here. He's really doing it much more holistically, categorically, you know, by um, print media and mass media advertising and some social media, some Google AdWords, but it's much more uh, holistic and much more diversified, I would say. So we're not putting all of our eggs in one Google basket, so to speak. Um, let me just see. One of the things too that we, you'll see when you read it, and it's acknowledged, we had poor student response rates, uh, poor student satisfaction return response rates, poor employer response rates. Um, so, I mean, pitiful, really, not just poor, but pitiful. So we know we need to uh, really try to do better with that. We've had it's it's difficult sometimes to get students to answer an online survey, but we have made it work. Dr. Griffith has made it work for our our um, credit side of the house. When when she first started, we had very, very well. First of all, we had paper Then we went to online and it was poor response rate and she's gotten it up to almost 50 percent response rate from our students who complete courses. And that's that's across every course because we give every student in every course an opportunity to provide feedback. So we want to do the same thing uh, for CE. There, there are other things that I think um, we need to look at. We need to look at how we're doing financial aid with um, CEWD, trying to beef that up, even handling the process better, but also increasing the numbers. And uh, yeah, so those, those are a few things. And, and there are many more that we have learned that we probably need to, to work on. But if, I would like to say if any region has any question that they would like to particularly ask, I would be happy to address it at this time. Okay, okay. Dr. Albrecht, let me go back and uh, we'll we'll just do a roll call and I'll let anybody that has a, a question uh, ask. Uh, we'll start with Regent Crum. No, I'm glad to see that we want to look at individual programs within the division at the next uh, review. Thank you. Okay, hey, Regent Draghi. No, um, Dr. Albrecht touched on all the things that I had, just all the negative reviews and what we can do to, to, to help those. And I was just wondering if some of it was coming from where the report was coming from um, based on the negativity, but so you answered my question. 
Okay, Regent Hurtenberger. I, yeah, I agree with uh, many of the things that Dr. Albrecht pointed out that have been problems with continuing education for a long time. Continuing ed, when I took over continuing ed, they operated independently as though they weren't even part of the college. And I remember the first meeting I was in, and those of you who remember Joan Rosano was commenting about how much money they were going to spend on advertising and how we were changing the way we were actually reaching out with our um, our outside enrollment in endeavors. And I got excited and I said, oh, good, that means continuing ed too. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. What are you talking about? Uh, no, that does not include continuing ed. That's just how archaic it was. So yeah, it's been a long time coming and I'm glad to hear you say the things that you've said and uh, CE will improve immensely when it is actually included in with the other operations of the college as though it's a part of and not a, a different part of the college. So thank you. And apologies okay. for the interruption. Andy Tackert has joined. Okay. Andy, can you hear? Wait, I need mean, Andy, are you there? How about now? Can you hear me? Yes. Hear yes, you. we can hear you. I can't. There you go. There uh, you are. Hello, yeah. Andy. Hey. All right, Tammy, for the minutes, uh, Regent Tacker joined at 6.34 p.m. Andy, we are, uh, are you muted? Um, uh, you know, yeah, I've been on here at a quarter till six trying to <laughs> get with y'all and I yeah, finally had to call Kelly and he, we had to reinstall it. So I don't know what the deal was. Don't feel bad, Andy. <laughs> I'm not a techie person, that's for sure. All right, ca carry on, Mike. I'm going to mute. OK. Uh, and Andy, just so you know, we're we're talking about the uh, uh, the goal number six. Uh, with the review of the continuing education and workforce development. So I, I, I don't know how much you heard, but we're going through and I'm giving each regent uh, a chance to ask questions. And so uh, the next up is Regent Kanapi. No, I don't have anything. I'm, I'm glad to see that the program is moving forward, though, in a, in a good direction, it looks like. So thank you. Regent Marble. Uh, just a couple of brief ones. Uh, first thing is one of the um, the discussions for solutions um, that was recommended through the report was a um, uh, maybe a deeper integration or or, or combination of of um, the advising programs, maybe steering students um, to this department who may not be college ready. Um, is that been talked about at more in depth? Well, thank you for that question, Regent Marvel. Um, and I couldn't agree with more with that. You know, when students come to us, uh, they may they may land more often. They land at our front counter in the A building, and they may come and say, "I want to, I I want to um, be a welder." And we say, "Well, do you want that for credit or not for credit?" And they're like, "Well, I don't know. I just want to be a welder." And and we 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 need to have better cross training with our credit advisors and our CE advisors. And I know before I came, that model was set up. that We actually had CE people on the front counter in that uh, in the admissions area so that they could help uh, address questions. Uh, we don't have that now. I don't know if that's where we'll move to, but we definitely need to get um, more, more knowledge about credit uh, CE programs with the credit folks. We have the same problem even within the credit areas. There are some programs that our advisors are more well versed with than others, and um, we are planning that our pathways, um, new pathways advising model will address that, and we will need to include CE within those pathway models. So, for instance, whoever does the allied health and nursing pathways credit uh, programming and advising, they will understand how to advise a student about CNA and the CE area, uh, medical assisting, the medication aid, and so on. So bringing that together is definitely part of the goal. Right. Oh, thank you. That's that. That's that's good to hear. the The, the follow up question to that was um, uh, the revenue generation seemed to increase over the past three years, 
and it seemed like the major strategy was elimination of programs that were not cost effective. Are we are we still in an area where we're going to be trimming some programs? We will definitely be looking at that. Um, I think when you look also at, at what has happened over the past three years, there's a couple of things. As always, if we have grant funding, we do better in CEWD because the grants often pay uh, for tuition for students so we can get higher enrollment, generate more contact hour reimbursement from the state. But also part of the reason that that some years, not all, some years there was a better margin was the trimming back on the staff. It, it wasn't necessarily that we generated more revenue, but the expenses were less. And so we really need to look at that because one of our goals is to really get out into the community more. We have some, you know, we have continued relationships with Ascend and Ineos. Um, and a couple of others, but we, there are really more businesses and industries that we need to be serving um, with the delivery of um, short term uh, career and technical education. So we are going to continue to look at a program where labor market, I didn't mention this, but labor market analysis is another area that we need to continually monitor. For instance, you'll notice one of the areas that uh, was in a negative um, a lot uh, over the years was in our CNC a manufacturing area and so uh, and that was largely due to the, the high salary of the the person who was teaching who was no longer with us uh, and uh, also the lower enrollments and so uh, Dr. Griffith was just telling me as a matter of fact today that looking at the labor market demand for CNC manufacturing it tends to be more in the northern part of Harris County northwest part of Harris County and not so much in even the eastern part of our county or even the eastern part of Harris County. So we do we want to do we want to kill that program? It's possible, but we don't want to sell off equipment and, and stop a program that really could have, especially who knows, coming up in the future, we may have yeah. a big demand yeah. for. But we will we are carefully review those things so that the decisions are made based upon data. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, Regent Tackard. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Regent Sanchez. Uh, no, except that I was uh, really glad to hear uh, you say that that we would be looking uh, more closely at programs. Um, I, I'm just wondering if down the road, you know, way down the road when things are better, uh, we couldn't revisit this, um, maybe highlighting the, the three best and maybe the three um, I hate to say worse, but you know, the not so pretty pictures. And um, so we can see which direction we're going to head in, you know, what the administrative staff would say we need to, to do besides. I mean, I've, I you can read it here, but you know what I mean? I'd like to, to hear from them. So just a thought. Reason stuck, sir. Well, you all know my background in continue ed is one of my most important things. I think that the uh, trades are hurting for good people, but uh, we have to look at the picture and see what we need to do. But uh, I'm glad we're taking a good look at it. And I think that's very important for the future of our college as well as future of what's needed in our area. Thank you. OK. And, uh, you know, my questions, I think, for the most part, have been answered. They were, you know. You know, the the interaction between CEWD and the marketing and 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 also the, the credit advisement. And I think I've got a, a good answer on that. I did have one question about uh, it mentions human resources and the inability to get uh, uh, new hires, I guess, uh, in, in a timely manner and, and causing them not to be able to offer some courses. And my question is when you when they identify a, a class or a course that they want to teach. Do, does the hiring, do they go out and find somebody and then make a recommendation to HR? Or do they go to HR and, and say, hey, we need somebody go find them for us? How does that work? Uh, generally speaking, all of our hiring across credit NC is handled the same way. Uh, when there is a hiring need, the, the requisition forms are 
uh, completed, stating what the position is, when it's needed, and so on. HR may, if it's a new type position, HR may have to analyze it and put a position grade on it so we know how much to pay the person. But simultaneously, uh, people can uh, in departmental areas can be out there recruiting and asking, you know, do you know anybody who might apply for those positions? And I would say that particular uh, case that's mentioned there uh, is uh, is um, somewhat retaliatory in nature. Cheap shot. Um, mm, yeah. It it uh, it yes there there okay. was opportunities for hiring to occur uh, that were uh, that just simply did not happen. Okay. Uh, and, and not because of what HR did or didn't do. OK, that's kind of what I thought. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't have any other questions. This is an information item, so uh, we will move on. And uh, if anybody uh, thinks of any other questions or there's any more information they would like to see, you know, certainly feel free to to, to talk to Dr. Albright. The next item on the agenda is to consider the approval of the electrical contract renewal. And uh, I am going to start by calling for a motion and a second, and then we will have discussion. Regent Hertenberger, would you move to? Well, let me before I do that, let me just ask, has any have any of the circumstances changed on this agenda item? Or is it just the gas? Uh, Carl, I guess that would yeah. you would be. Uh, so far from talking to our representative uh, with Tradition Energy, Bob Wooten, um, just a little more than an hour hour ago, it's it's only the gas. So the electrical we think is still stable enough to where uh, we can. It, it is pretty much as presented in the agenda. OK, thank you, Carl. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, if uh, Regent Hertenberger uh, would uh, would move to approve uh, 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 allowing Dr. Albrecht to uh, sign off on the electrical contract renewal. So moved. Uh, Regent Canopy, would you second that? I second it. OK, uh, all those uh, in favor. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and have discussion. Uh, and Carl, before we even do that, let's uh, I would just ask if you want to go ahead and, and, and speak to it and then we will go through and ask questions. OK, so uh, we've had Tradition Energy before uh, help us with both gas contracts and electrical contracts. So since we're talking about electrical here, um, the last electrical contract we had adopted uh, by the board was in 2018 it was for it's for a five-year period it goes all the way to 2023 just so you have kind of that background information so this one that you're considering is for an even longer period of time and i'll let bob wooten talk to you about that um, this is something that other entities such as um, uh, cities possibly even school districts and, and other colleges are considering but for sure I, I know he's given me the example of cities doing these long-term contracts so you'll notice that it's 120 months that's 10 years so <laughs> that's amazing uh yeah and but it's uh but if if that turns out to be a good number for us you know you get a lot of stability over a lot of years so i'll, I'll turn it over to bob to kind of explain anything else that might be help y'all with your decision here great uh, thanks very much, Carl. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully everybody can uh, see and hear me. I just want to thank you, uh, Chairman, Vice Chair, Regents, for allowing me to speak with you all tonight. And uh, while I may be knowledgeable in the uh, energy markets, energy procurement strategy, I am not knowledgeable in technology and IT. So <laughs> if, if something goes amiss in my conversations here, please don't hold it against me. Uh, as, as Carl said, we, we've worked with the college since 2014, a very good relationship. And uh, really what you see <clears throat> before you tonight in terms of the electricity contract is an opportunity to achieve additional savings, get those savings locked down long term. And uh, this has been a, a very consistent strategy used um, not just all throughout the state, but in this region. Uh, Brazosport, uh, San Jacinto Colleges have all made this exact type of move, uh, as had uh, Pearland, Missouri City, League City, LaPorte, Fort Bend County. 
And in fact, um, Tradition Energy had a webinar a couple of weeks ago talking about what's happening with COVID-19, the effects on the market. So we had a follow-up webinar today. And in particular, the example given in terms of how to take advantage of what's happening with electricity prices as a result of everything going on right now, somebody being in the position of having an existing contract expiring in 2023, and then being able to negotiate a lower term that uh, starts in 23 and goes out past 2030 was the exact example used mm -hmm. in, in the webinar. So, I mean, it, this is definitely uh, a very good strategy, very consistent with what the region is doing and will provide long-term savings for the college. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna, unless Carl, unless you wanna add anything to that, uh, I will go through the role and, and let me, I tell you what, before we even do that, I butchered that the way that I said that motion. And so I'm going to state it the right way. Uh, it, it, Rick, is that okay? Rick? That is okay. You okay. can restate the motion. Okay. I want, I want to go back and let me just, let me just read the motion again. Uh, it, it, it is to recommend that the board grant authority to the president to execute an electricity contract for a 120 month term starting May 2023 at a rate not to exceed 0 0.041 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. And, and Regent Hertenberger made the motion, Regent Canopy seconded. Uh, now we will have any questions. Regent Crum? No questions. Regent Draghi? No questions. Regent Hertenberger? No questions. Put it in the back, yeah, put it in the back trash. Regent Canopy? No questions. <laughs> Regent Marvel? Yes, I've got a question. The, um, the motion is to not exceed um, uh, 0 0.041 kilowatt. Um, I'm looking at the contract and, and the numbers reflect that it's even less than four at Reliant Energy for a 10 year contract. Am I reading that wrong? Uh, I, I, this is Bob, I'll answer that. No, uh, you are reading that correct. And uh, the reason why we recommended a cap on that is because of the movement happening in the market right now. Uh, we obviously want to achieve the very lowest rate possible, but at the same time, we didn't uh, want to have happen what has happened on the natural gas side, which we'll talk about now, which is for the market to take off and uh, there be, let's say, a slight miss in hitting that cap. That would lead to it having to go back to a later board meeting and just have that kind of snowball effect of, of prices rising. So the, the expectation is uh, getting at or under four cents, mm -hmm. but that cap just gives us a little bit of room in case things move around. Okay, that was it. Okay, Regent Tackard. No questions. Regent Sanchez. No question. Regent Stuxa. No questions. Okay, and uh, I just would say that's unbelievable. You know, uh, a ten-year contract. I, you know, I've never seen anything like that, and I think just from a budgeting standpoint. Uh, if you can lock in a low rate like that for 10 years, that's just absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, certainly would be a, a great for the college. So uh, anyway, if we don't have any other questions, we'll move on to vote. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start with Regent Crum. Do you vote to approve? Yes. Regent Draghi? Yes. Regent Hertenberger? Yes. Regent Canopy? Yes. Regent Marble. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. Regent Sanchez. Yes. Regent Stuxa. Yes. Regent Pyburn votes yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, now we will move on to the next item on the agenda, uh, which is the natural gas contract. And uh, I have a 
a motion. And I, I guess before we even do that, let's just go ahead and get the explanation uh, as to what has happened with that. OK, I can give a, a, a short explanation when let Bob take over, but generally not as good news with natural gas, at least right now. And it's only a slight glimmer of good news for for the state of Texas. Uh, but uh, for us in the meantime, it's not as good news. So so this is dealing more with uh, kind of biding our time and uh, voting on on an extension. Um, just to get us into a, a period in the future where hopefully things settle down and we get a chance to do the same thing that y'all just voted on with electricity. And so that's what Bob will explain to you now. OK, Bob. Hey. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Carl. Um, so as we met, as Carl just mentioned, uh, we're, we're in a little bit of a different scenario here with with the natural gas. The college has a uh, contract currently that expires at the end of May. So the next term would begin at the beginning of June. Uh, most recent rates have been uh, at, at three, $3.21 per decatherm. And um, you'll see on, on the uh, action item, we, we took the same approach as we did with electricity, uh, went through multiple rounds of pricing, and really the goal was to get a good rate secured below $3. And in particular, uh, since since the uh, I would say since the COVID-19 crisis and really being exact, uh, uh, exacerbated this week, natural gas prices have just shot uh, up incredibly. Um, one of the key uh, uh, factors has been what's happened with the battle for oil, uh, with Russia just flooding the market uh, with oil, in particular really attacking producers here in the US. <laughs> that led to oil prices sinking. And then you combine that now with the uh, lack of demand resulting from uh, everything happening all across the world in terms of uh, businesses and transportation in particular. And uh, what's happened is, is that uh, oil prices went so low, they went negative this week. You had uh, producers paying people to take that oil in Texas, maybe more so than any other part of the country, a lot of the natural gas that we have comes from oil wells called called associated gas. So when you uh, start having that problem with the oil wells, you're now having problems with, with natural gas, leading to uh, just natural gas prices uh, shooting way up due to uh, lack, of, uh, lack of supply. So all of that being combined means that we're in a situation where we have to renew the contract. We can't renew it at a rate under $3. And the current contract right now with Pro Energy already has language in the contract uh, that it can function as a floating index contract um, where the, the uh, rate that you would pay is based on an index rate over Houston Ship Channel price. So uh, the, the recommendation would be that renew the contract with Pro Energy. It has a contractually established index rate. And then when the market calms down, uh, may even be as soon as this fall, then we can look at securing a fixed rate down at the target uh, level that we wanted. And one last thing that I'll mention that, that at least makes that um, a little more feasible with the college is that your natural gas usage is obviously going to be lower in summer than it is in winter because of uh, warmer weather and, and so forth. Um, so therefore, having an index throughout the summer is going to have much of a less impact on you than it would if that were happening during the winter months. OK, thank you. Thank you, Bob. I will open it up for questions. Regent Crum. No questions. Regent Draghi. No questions. Regent Hertenberger. No questions. Regent Canopy. No questions. Regent Marble. No questions. Regent Tackard. No questions. Regent Sanchez. No questions. Regent Stuxa. No questions. OK, and uh, I just comment that the, the market this week, <laughs> I, I, I don't envy you <laughs> trying to figure that out. Uh, I read somewhere that air, air uh, jet fuel consumption was down like 94% and gasoline use 
was down 86 percent globally, not just locally, but globally. That's just incredible, uh, unbelievable. But uh, anyway, I'm going to read the motion that we need to. It's different than the motion in your board book. I will read it and then ask. Uh, I'm going to ask Regent Marvel to to make the, the motion and then Regent Tackard to second. And the motion uh, states, I move the board renew its existing agreement with Pro Energy for 36 months at the agreement's already established index rate and that we delegate authority to Dr. Albrecht to execute any required renewal agreement. So moved. I second. OK, okay we have a motion by Regent Marvel and a second by Regent Tackard. We've already had uh, time for questions and discussion, so we'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're not in a regular meeting. Regent Crum, do you vote to affirm? Affirm, yes. Regent Draghi? Yes. Regent Hertenberger? Yes. Regent Canopy? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Tackard? Regent Tackard? Yes. OK, Regent Sanchez. Yes. Regent Stuxa. Yes. Regent Pyburn votes yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Bob. We appreciate uh, uh, you guys working on that. That's really a, a critical piece to controlling the, the expenses at the college and I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, the next item on the agenda uh, is a report on federal, state, and private grants awarded during the 2019-2020 year uh, and the projected grants for 2020-2021. Uh, has Galen joined us yet? Galen is on the phone. I believe he is no longer muted. Galen, can you hear us, sir? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi, Galen. Oh, hi, Thank Chairman mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Um, yes, good evening, everyone, and the Regents and Dr. Albrecht. Um, the items that uh, you were provided in the board book uh, outline uh, both the monthly charts that uh, we provide uh, college administration and on our pod as well as uh, detailed information uh, on the annual report that we provide to you. Um, they, there were four grants uh, that I wanted to uh, update for y'all. Uh, actually, they we received award notices on the four uh, right after spring break, so uh, and two recently this week. So they were quite a blessing uh, as everyone is dealing with the pandemic. Uh, the first one I wanted to uh, mention to you uh, was the Texas Workforce Commission Skills Development Grant uh, that we received uh, for $330,080 uh, for the Ascend Performance Materials Project. Uh, that particular grant uh, will serve 393 workers, uh, many of them new hires uh, for the company. Uh, the uh, grant contract uh, will be uh, executed soon on that and uh, everyone is anxious to get started. Uh, one uh, that was quite a blessing that we received uh, uh, right uh, exactly almost on my birthday actually uh, was the Metallica Foundation grant. Uh, Sarah Curry Harrell uh, deserves a great deal of credit on this one. Uh, we applied to uh, the Metallica Foundation through the uh, American Association of Community Colleges in 2018. Um, the only the top 10 uh, were funded, uh, so we were not funded that year, but uh, they contacted us uh, in March and said we had actually made the top 15, so they were going to fund uh, the other five uh, that they uh, like very much, and this particular grant uh, provides $100,000 for CDL training. Uh, it would 
uh, provide 22 uh, students full uh, scholarship uh, for the CDO program, uh, as well as some marketing and uh, advertising that we can do uh, with the foundation uh, to uh, uh, mirror the project to the community. Uh, Oh, uh, hello. Can everyone still hear me? Hello. Yes. Yes. You're back. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. The computer computer. Uh, two that uh, came in this week uh, award notices were on the uh, jobs and education for Texans grant, or as we call it, the JET grant uh, that uh, we write each year. Uh, one uh, in particular for our nursing program, the associate degree in nursing. Uh, Dr. Fontenot does a wonderful job on this. This will be her fourth uh, grant under this funding. Uh, if fully funded, uh, we're still waiting to see the exact amounts. It would, uh, they would provide $284,729 uh, for uh, medical training equipment uh, that we can also uh, provide and do cross training with our allied health programs. Uh, the other uh, Jet Grant was a partnership with Danbury Independent School District. Uh, they, acting as a lead agent, were allowed to apply uh, on the other side of uh, this Jet Grant competition if they partnered with a, a community college. And we were very proud to do so. Um, if funded 100%, uh, the grant would provide about $53,000 in welding equipment uh, to uh, Danbury and about $220,000 in equipment uh, for our welding program. So uh, those came in at a, just a very good time. A lot of us were, like y'all, weighing very heavy with the pandemic and so uh, created quite a lot of excitement, you know, for our departments. Um, and uh, I've been working uh, closely with the foundation with Wendy and uh, Sydney Hildenberg uh, on looking at found, uh, grants that we could uh, pursue through the foundation. Uh, we've identified six that we've submitted uh, grants that would support uh, different programs, uh, scholarships for uh, STEM uh, programs on campus, uh, process technology, uh, as well as our Food for Change program. So uh, we're very actively looking at ways to try to bring in money this summer that will support uh, the needs of our students uh, when they return. So um, I'll uh, be glad to answer any questions if anyone has uh, uh, anything I can answer regarding the grants. Okay, thank you, Galen. Uh, let's start with Regent Crum. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, not at this time. Regent Drage? No, thank you. Regent Hertenberger? No questions. Regent Canopy? No. Regent Marble? Galen, is, am I to understand that is Metallica the band that has a foundation that's giving us that money for CDL? <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. And there's a wonderful story to that. Uh, one of the musicians, they're uh, father is a truck driver. So this was uh, very close and dear to his heart. So not only did we uh, manage to be one of the top 15 in the way that it was written uh, by Sarah Curry Harrell, but uh, it uh, definitely had a vein of motivation between the uh, musician and his efforts to motivate uh, the band to uh, say, hey, we need more good truckers out there. Well, yeah, I know it doesn't fit me anymore, but I'm going to break out my Metallica t-shirt tonight. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> oh, man. That's a picture I can't get out of my head, uh, Marvel. Oh. Well, well, we'll, we'll, need, we'll need to take a picture <laughs> and put it, on, put it on the truck on the wrap. Okay. <laughs> All right, Regent Tackard. Uh, no questions, but uh, kudos to you, Galen. You've been doing a fantastic job for many years and have have really brought in a lot of extra money and, and taken care of a lot of extra students. It, uh, it's It's been wonderful. You are great. Amen. Oh, you're here. Oh, thank, thank you all. Regent Sanchez. 
Uh, no questions, but I, I echo what uh, uh, Regent Tackard said and everybody seconded. Thank you, Dick Galen. Thank you, thank you, Regent Sanchez. Regent Stuxa. Well, I certainly agree that the grants are a big part of what we need to have to support the college. I, I noticed that there was several uh, situations where the government has offered to give some support to help bring the colleges back up to a normal situation. Are we looking to any of that? I know Harvard has a lot of money they want to give back. Uh, yes, uh, we're receiving uh, 2.27 million uh, through the CARES package uh, for our college. Um, I spoke to the business office uh, by email today and uh, they uh, drew down the uh, final portion. Uh, so we'll have access to 100% of those funds. And I also talked with the uh, Texas Workforce Commission, uh, 345 million was provided through the CARES package uh, uh, through national uh, emergency dislocated worker funds. Uh, these were similar funds that we were able to uh, have a grant through the Hurricane Harvey uh, in 2017. So uh, the Workforce Commission promised to uh, keep me apprised of uh, when that money flows through to the states and would flow through the local workforce board. So I'm very anxious to uh, see how that that's looking. So uh, looking every day, definitely it's some new opportunities there. Thank you. Okay, and, and Gail and I just echo everything everybody said. You've always, you're always just a, a just a, a, a good guy to work with, and I, we know you work hard. And and uh, you know uh, the the what you do has made a huge difference for the college over the years, and and will continue to do so. And we appreciate you. He's a good hire, uh, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Albright. I, I, I <laughs> Chairman, thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to say thank you very much to Galen too. And it's not only the hard work that Galen has put in, but he has taught so many people and mentored them to be able to write the grants. You heard him say, you know, Sarah Curry Hale did this, Deb Fontenot, I helped her do that. Uh, Wendy is looking, he's working with Wendy for foundations. Those are just a few of the people that he has assisted. The amount of grant money that he has brought in is just phenomenal when you consider one one grant coordinator, and, but the impact that he has by assisting everyone because he's so easy to work with and uh, people will co go to him and ask for help. So I think that is just a wonderful thing about Galen. And yes, Regent Hurtenberger, he is a great hire. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you all so much. I, I, it's it's everyone on campus, uh, his family, and I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I'm, I'm very blessed. Good. Well, thank you. And uh, we will go ahead now uh, to vote or let's see. This is just we don't have to vote on this. This was information only. So Galen, thank you again and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you all so much. Y'all have a blessed evening and, and I'll uh, sign off. OK, thank you. Uh -huh. Bye -bye. All, right. Mm -hmm. all right. Next item on the agenda is to consider the approval of a personnel replacement for um, an academic advisor. You guys uh, have the information uh, for the candidate that's been recommended uh, in the board book. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Regent Sanchez if she would move for approval. So moved. Regent Stuxa, would you second that? I will, thank you. OK, we have a motion in a second. I will see if there are any questions for Dr. Albrecht. Regent Crum? No question. Regent Draghi? No questions. Regent Hurtenberger? No questions. Regent Canopy? No. Regent Marble? No. Regent Tackard? No. Regent Sanchez? This is a dumb question. Is he an Alvin fella? Um, I don't I don't see his ad 
address right on there, but he is a f current employee. He is a grant funded employee of ours. Okay. He's worked for us for, for some number of months, a little over a year, I think. And so he's in, uh, internal, but was on soft money and now will be moving to hard money. Okay, thank you. Okay, Regent Stuxa. I'm good. Okay. I don't have any questions either. His name sounds really familiar, and I, I don't know, but I, I somewhere I've heard him, a, of him. Before. There's there's a, a Pounds family in Alvin, and that's why I asked. I know the mother, but I don't remember all the kids. So, no, I coach kids are not boys. kids anymore. He's, he's not one of those three. <laughs> now, Bell, he's not one of those three. Okay. Well, we have a motion in a second to approve. Uh, Michael Pounds uh, to fill the full-time position for Academic Advisor, Student Services Department. I will do a roll call vote. Regent Crum? Yes. Regent Drage? Yes. Regent Hertenberger? Yes. Regent Canopy? Yes. Regent Marble? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. Regent Sanchez? <laughs> yes. Okay. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Okay, Regent Pyburn votes yes. The motion passes unanimously. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to consider uh, approval of some resale trust property. There are four parcels there in Liverpool. Um, I looked at it a little bit. All of them together are four tenths of an acre or just a little over four tenths of an acre. And uh, I I uh, looked at, at the offer, which, you know, my, my general, if somebody else is going to have to carry this banner, I took it over from Bart and whoever's going to take it over. But my general rule of thumb is if they don't offer 75% of what the value of the property is, I generally vote to reject. Uh, but having said that, uh, this property is landlocked. Uh, from what I can tell, I, I I don't know. I looked at the person who's made this offer, and it doesn't match the the uh, the tax rolls for any of the names on the property. So they they may be using a different name, but it has to be one of those people that's got some way to access that property from one of those one of the roadways that circles this property. So um, Anyway, I don't have any real strong feelings for it one way or the other. I'm just going to open it up. I think it's uh, $400 uh, for each of the four parcels. Uh, the, the, the judge value runs anywhere from $1,900 to $2,500, I guess, based on the, the actual size of the, the, the lot. Uh, Regent Crum, do you have a, <laughs> would you like to make a motion? Move to accept. Okay. Regent Draghi, would you make a second or, or second that? Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, the offer for trust property. Uh, we'll uh, go ahead and vote or let's first we'll have discussion Any or any questions. Regent Crum, any questions? No, sir. Regent Draghi? No, sorry. Okay. Regent Hurdenberger? No, sir. Regent Canopy. Is it all of the parcels? Are we voting? On, is that the motion for all of them? Yes. Okay. Then I have none. Regent Marble. No questions. Regent Tackard. No questions. Regent Sanchez. No questions. Regent Stutza. No questions. Okay, we will move on to vote to approve uh, the sale of the trust property. All four parcels. Regent Crum. Yes. Regent Drage? Yes. Regent Hurtenberger? Yes. Regent Canopy? Yes. Regent Marble? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. Regent Sanchez? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Pyburn votes yes. The motion passes uh, unanimously. Okay. Uh, next item. Uh, is the financial report ending March of 2020. And uh, I'm just going to go down the roll and we will uh, open it for questions. Regent Crum? None. Regent Draghi? 
None. Regent Hertenberger. No questions. Regent Kanafi. No questions. Regent Marble. No questions. Regent Packard. No questions. Regent Sanchez. No questions. Regent Stuxa. No questions. Okay, and, and Carl, I'm not gonna let you off that easy. I came in 18 years ago, guns blazing and hammering you on the checkbook. So I'm gonna finish with a checkbook question. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> not not a hard one, I don't think. Uh, there, there was one check to Magnum Custom Trailer Manufacturing for 96,693. Is that have something to do with the truck driving program? Maybe. Uh, I don't believe so. My guess would be uh, the um, we call it Mobile Go. I think. Uh, oh yeah. Maybe Debbie can help me out on that. Or Jade. Was it Magnum? Yeah, Was that the it's, company? It's for the uh, grant. Okay. So yeah, we got a, a private grant money and uh, a vendor to customize that trailer. So that should be what that is. Okay. All right. Well, that that uh, that that answers that. As usual, there's almost always a good explanation, and I appreciate it. Uh, with that, we will. Uh, I would ask that. Uh, let's see, Regent Hertenberger, would you move to approve the financial reports? So moved. Regent Canopy, would you second that? I second it. Okay. We'll go down the roll. Regent Crum, do you vote? Yes. To Okay, Regent Draghi? Yes. Regent Hertenberger? Yes. Regent Canopy? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. Regent Sanchez? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Pyburn votes yes. Uh, the financial reports are approved. Uh, it was approved unanimously. All right, uh, next we are going to go. Uh, it is 7.20 p.m. Uh, and uh, we will now adjourn to closed session pursuant uh, to Texas. What about, what about the resolution, Mike? Well, that's we're going to discuss that. OK, OK. And, yeah, uh, we will now adjourn to, uh, to closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code sections 551.071, 551.072, and 551.082. Uh, the Opens Meeting Act for the following purposes. Uh, and again, it is now 720. Uh, the, uh, I want to tell everybody don't exit this meeting. Uh, just turn off your camera and mute uh, the sound. And then you have a number uh, there, 281. Well, you've got the number to call. I'm not going to say it uh, online, but uh, I'm going to give everybody five minutes for a quick bio break and uh, uh, and stretch your legs and we will come back at 725 uh, into that executive session when you call in announce that you're on the call uh, and then mute uh, your microphone if you would and then after uh, we have discussion then we will come back into open session to vote uh, on the resolution uh, so with that uh, everybody can uh, uh, go ahead and, and uh, turn off your camera and be sure to mute your sound.
Are you here? Here. Regent Draghi. Draghi. Here. Here. Okay, Regent Hertenberger. Here. Here. Regent Canopy. Here. Here. I'm getting a terrible getting echo. Terrible. Yes, we yeah, are. Somebody still got their phone on. Yeah. yeah. Regent Marble. Here. Here. Regent Tackard. Here. Here. Regent Sanchez. Here. Here. Regent Stuxa. Here. 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 <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> That's going to be hard to count a vote. People need to mute their mics. Okay, Regent uh, uh, Dr. Albrecht, are you here? I'm here. Okay, Regent Pyburn is here. Uh, I think that's everybody we need. Uh, let the uh, Tammy, are you here? I am. Okay. Oh, hang on. Yes, I'm. I am here. Okay. For the record, it is 8:29 p.m. and I'm uh, moving us back into open session. And uh, we have to consider uh, the approval of a resolution of payment for personnel during uh, the closure due to COVID-19 and uh, during the altered operations. And uh, uh, I'm just going to go ahead since we've had discussion in executive session uh, and, and, and uh, in consultation with our uh, attorney. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and ask that uh, uh, Regent Crum uh, would would entertain a motion. I move that we accept the resolution. OK, I have a Regent to accept uh, the resolution uh, by Regent Crum. Uh, Regent Draghi, uh, would you second that? I second that. OK, I have a motion and a second uh, to approve uh, the resolution. Uh, and I will now call uh, do a roll call vote. Regent Crum. Yes. OK, Regent Draghi. Yes. Regent Hertenberger. Yes. Regent Canopy. Yes. Regent Marble. No. Regent Tackard. Yes. Regent Sanchez. Yes. Regent Stuxa. No. Regent Pyburn votes no. So the motion passes six to three with Regent Marble. Regent Stuxa and Regent Pyburn voting no. Uh, and with that, guys, I believe uh, that we are complete tonight. Uh, I appreciate everybody uh, working through this. I know it's a little, it's new, but I think everybody uh, did well. Appreciate all the work that the staff, Kelly and Tammy and 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 I'm sure Wendy and Dr. Albrecht and everybody else put into to, to making this uh, easy for us. And uh, uh, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn by uh, Regent Hertenberger. Second. So moved. We got a motion and a second. Is that Regent Draghi that seconded? No, it's me, Andy. Andy seconded. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Something's wrong with my headphones. Uh, all right. With that, we will vote. Uh, to approve the motion to adjourn, Regent Crum. Yes. Regent Draghi. Yes. Regent Hertenberger. Yes. Regent Canopy. Yes. Regent Marble. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. Regent Sanchez. In honor of uh, Cheryl and Mike Gigum. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Regent Stuxa. Yes. And Regent Pyburn votes yes. And with that, we are adjourned. You guys have a great week and a great weekend. Stay safe. And uh, we will see you back, uh, I guess, on what is it? May the 12th May is 12th. Our, our meeting. 12th. All right. Yes. Thank you, guys. Y'all take care. Good night, everybody. You too. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.